Here we're challenged to find the equation of a line containing the given pair of points. So they give you two points, and these two points are on a line, and we have to find the equation <coughs> excuse me, that makes up that line. And remember that you need two bits of information to describe any line. You need either two points or the slope and a point. And for an equation, for an equation, we need to we need to wind up having this y equals mx plus b business, where the m is the slope of the line and the b is the y-intercept. So this is called slope-intercept form. So that's slope-intercept form. So we, what we need to do first is find the slope, because we don't have the slope, we don't have the y-intercept, because these are not the y-intercepts. These are just two points out there off the axes. So First off, we want to find the slope. Remember the slope, you subtract the y values, and then you subtract the x values. So that's how you find the slope. So we're going to subtract our y values. So negative 7 minus a negative 4, and negative 9, our x values now, negative 9 minus a negative 2. And whenever I see two negatives together, I'm going to say that they're pluses. I remember how two negatives make a plus. So negative 7 plus 4 is a negative 3. A negative 9 plus 2 would be a negative 7. And two negatives divided by each other make a positive value of 3 sevenths. So our slope is 3 sevenths. So we know this value is 3 sevenths. So here's what we know so far. But I don't know the, the, the y-intercept. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of these points. Remember I said that to describe any line, you just need a slope and a point. Now these points are on the line. So these points, one of the, each, each point works in this equation. If I plug this point in, I, I should get an equality. If I plug this in, I should get an equality, an equal value on both sides. So here's how you do this. First, you find the slope. Second, you're going to, uh, you plug the slope in here. Then you pick one of these points. So I'm going to pick this one here. It doesn't matter. I could have used this one. I, I've got the same answer. Uh, and then I'll put the 3 sevenths times negative 2 plus b. So now we got to work with a fraction. So when I multiply a fraction and a whole number, it's like me saying 3 sevenths times negative 2 over 1. Right? Negative 2 over 1 is the same thing as negative 2, but now it's a fraction. And when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. So that becomes negative 6 over 7. All right, so here's what we got. Negative 4 equals negative 6 sevenths plus b. That's what that right there is. All right, so now we're going to add this away. Right, negative 6 sevenths plus 6 sevenths cancels to 0. But then we need to add it over here. All right, so if I want to add 4 and 6 sevenths, I'm going to come over here. Negative 4 plus 6 sevenths. And that's negative 4 over 1. Now, I can't just go straight across. It doesn't make any sense to do it that way. It was only multiplication that works that way. When you add or subtract two fractions from each other, they have to have the same denominator, the same bottom. So since this is sevenths, I'm going to convert this into sevenths. So I'm going to multiply the bottom by seven. But I'm also going to multiply the top by seven. And technically what I'm doing is, is seven over seven is one. So really what I'm doing is multiplying this value by one. It's a tricky looking one, but it's a one nonetheless. And anything multiplied by 1 is itself. So it's legal to do this. So negative 7 times negative 4 would be negative 28. 7 times 1 is 7, which is the whole point. That was the whole point of getting the same denominators. Now negative 28 plus 6, negative 22, and you keep the same denominator. Keep the same bottom. So what does that mean? This value here is negative 22 sevenths. All right, it, it, this, this problem becomes... A, more convoluted because of the fractions, but that's okay. The b value, the y-intercept, is negative 22 sevenths. So now I have both bits of information. I've got the slope and the y-intercept. So y equals the slope, which we said was 3 sevenths, x, and it's a negative 22 sevenths. So I'm going to say minus 22 sevenths. And that's how you do all these linear, uh, all these linear, uh, all these questions asking for equations of a line, you do it like this. This is the basics of it. You need to find the slope, which sometimes it's given, sometimes it's not. Then you just plug in what you know here, so pick a point, plug it in, 
and then solve it down for B and then you write it up right over here now this is the slope intercept form and that's what what most questions are asking for but sometimes they ask for the standard form the standard form so we're gonna do it the same way but if it asks for the standard form of the equa equation of a line well the standard form is ax plus by equals c where a b and c are numbers so <coughs> excuse me uh, the last example is y equals 3 sevenths x minus 22 sevenths well you need to have both the x and y value on the same side so we're going to take the 3 sevenths and subtract it subtract it away to the other side so if I subtract 3 sevenths on this side I subtract it over here so negative 3 sevenths x plus y equals negative 22 sevenths and sometimes they uh, people don't they don't in standard form they don't like a b and c to be fractions so sometimes we need to get rid of our fractions so to do that we multiply everything by the denominator multiply everything by the denominator and that gets rid of the fraction that gets rid of the denominator and this time seven and this time seven so this would be your standard form or this they're both standard form in my opinion that's how you do all these questions you start off by finding the slope plug it in solve and pick a point solve for b get your equation